And this is kind of a really cool and different thing for us. We've got uh, country star Walker Hayes on with us. And I appreciate you being here, man. Thank you oh, very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, and I want to talk about this country. crazy cool song you have called Craig. And the guy who's kind of the inspiration of that song, Craig, is here as well. He's the man. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 wild. And I want to get to that. But first, it's because it's a cool take on faith. Uh, yes, but sir. first, we've got to talk about... Uh, fancy like. Yeah, we fancy like Applebee's on a date night. That is an <laughs> earworm, man. And yeah. I, I mean, I found that too on TikTok, like probably most people did, right? Yeah. And that's my daughter's fault. Yeah. <laughs> really? we, uh, <laughs> you know, over COVID, my team said, hey, you need to, you need to get on TikTok. And I'm, you know, I'm an older guy. I'm just a dad. And I was like, you kidding me? You're like, man, I what? just finished <laughs> figuring out Instagram, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling on that. Yeah. You know, I'm Why are we changing the, the game? Yeah. My, my daughter and I started doing dances to all the songs I put out. Man, we wrote this song about Applebee, you know, just with, with my friends wrote it. Wrote it from the heart. It's a silly song, I love, but I like the song it, about Applebee's. He really it wrote is. it from the heart. He I meant did. it. <laughs> it's about you know. It's it's honestly, it's my my whole family's favorite restaurant. It's the only restaurant I can say, hey, you guys want to eat at Applebee's, and everybody's happy. It kind of snuck on my album, and one Sunday, my my daughter said, "Hey, Dad, that that song needs a dance." And I, I kid you not, that night, everything. For my, in my career changed. What was your career like before that broke? My wife and I got here in 2004, and my career was was getting going, and then, I mean, it was like negative numbers. Right. You know, we went up and down, man. Okay, so your wife, like, was she your ride or die where it was kind of like, okay, you, uh, I am behind you, you keep plugging away at this, or was she like, hey, here's an application to Home Depot? No, 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 my wife, uh, we met in 11th grade, I asked her to move to Nashville when we were 22 or 3 on a complete whim, she never once did she put like an ultimatum, she just stood right by me. That's cool, man. she, She felt every heartbreak, and, and she felt every, you know, little bit of excitement we've had. You know, you talk about your love uh, for your wife and Applebee's. I'm assuming they're uh, kind of don't maybe make me like rank them, days. man. <laughs> <laughs> when we get in trouble. I saw that you have a gold Applebee's card. What does that card get you? Because I mean, you <laughs> help them uh, immensely. What does that get Dude, you? It's a- it's Applebee's for life, man. What? It never go. It never it never runs out. They they send me one every month. We could all go. Well, well, yeah. I, I, I got time <laughs> after this. <laughs> yeah, people are the best, man. Uh, online, like, I, there's this great video of you dancing with your kids. And this lady, I read the comment. She's like, "Hey, Walker, uh, love how you do things with your kids. These visit videos really warm my heart." Wish my ex husband was there for our kid like you are for yours. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. But like, I, I would assume there's like pressure in uh, what you do and balancing family and you know, success because your success like rocketed, but then your family's what got you there, you know? So right. how do you kind of balance that stuff? Do you take your family with you on tour and stuff? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't do it. You know, I wouldn't go on the road if, uh, you know, if they couldn't come with me. So yeah, that, that helps, that helps the actual work part, you know, for me, uh, you know, my kids are all at amazing ages i find it important you know to just spend time with them and so i'm grateful that they they sacrifice a lot you know to come out on the road with me so i'm just really really grateful that they do that and that that helps me walker hates has a song fancy like and it's a lot of fun on tiktok and everything but there's a song called craig that he wrote about a guy he met at church who showed him what faith should look like i still ain't figured out church yet but craig I get. The story is very like a narrative of Craig, who's here, and kind of your interaction. Is it like legit, true? Like everything that you kind of walk through with that so- that that song is like kind of how it happened. Yeah, I wasn't a believer when I wrote that song. Really, uh, I just wrote it, um, and I didn't put the name of Jesus in it. You know, uh, it's a very honest song. Craig walked, you know, beside us through this dismal you know, music career, wasn't going anywhere. I was working at Costco up the street uh, at 4 a.m. I was an alcoholic. Um, I mean, I drank sun up to sun down, pretty much just passed out with a, you know, drink in my hand for about a year solid, you know. And there was a point where, you know, 
I, we would be riding home from Craig's house with my wife, and I and I would literally ask her, "Why do you think these people love us so much?" You know, and it was because I, you know, we were so accustomed to being our affection being so performance based, you know, in this town and right. within my family, you know, I, I was not making any sense to my family. I've been chasing this dream 10 or 12 years with nothing, no fruit to show for it. And not to blame all those people. That's how we looked at people too, was like, if you love us well, we'll love you back. Well, you know, if you, if you abide by our, you know, if you do life kind of like us, we'll join you in life. And that, <laughs> that had create, honestly, that had created a little Island for Laney and our, our kids. And we didn't really have a lot of friends. So I was overwhelmed by Craig's love. I mean, I could not make him go away, <laughs> but, uh, but man, you know, and, but what one thing that kind of infuriated me was that he was a Christian and that was not how I saw Christian. I, I had, lower expectations for believers based on my past and then uh you know he gave us the vehicle like the song says all you gotta do is sign in this show i said no no way but he wouldn't take no for an answer we had one car we were driving everywhere illegally like every, every light we pull up my kids would duck down you know so a cop didn't see us all. We didn't have enough seatbelts. and oh, so wow. he provided us with this car and it it embarrassed me it was it was the bravest thing I I think I've ever witnessed someone do. I I I did not want to accept the vehicle. You would have thought I'd have been glad, you know. But no, I, I, I I felt like ashamed. You know, I was like I've sunk this low. Like I can't I can't do it on my own. That that so so much that a friend feels like they need to give me the car out of their garage. But Craig said something that night. He said, "Man, somebody did this for me once." just let me do this for you and that gave me permission to be weak and then I could never really thank him face to face in a way that I thought was meaningful enough and so I began to write this song and and again I didn't I just want to say I love you thank you for, for for the gift of your kindness whatever you got I don't know what it is but you you like the song says you might actually know some some dude named Jesus. That you might, you know, and that was huge for me. That was that was that was magnificent to hear from the lips of of a proud, loud, annoyingly anti everything that person, you know. Right. And so um, I'm pretty sure that's that's funny. That song slaps me in the face now every night because I sing it now. Pro proclaiming Jesus, like I, I beg unbelievers in the audience to just bear with me. And if <laughs> and if they hate me because I said, I, I, I want to tell you my testimony, I know exactly how they feel. That wasn't long ago, and and um, and so now when I sing the song, I just la I just laugh in in God's grace, thinking, man, I was writing the the uh, a note to a friend about the moment my heart began to soften. That song was never intended to go to anybody else, but just me and Laura. And, um, you know, when we got it, it broke me. I, I was actually in a season where I was really discouraged in ministry and everything. We had moved over here to help plan a church and we were five years in and I was that day, I was walking the streets and I was just, pouring my heart out to God, crying. And I stopped in the middle of the walkway and just said, Lord, I'm so discouraged right now. And I just beg you, I need you to encourage me. Laura and I went on a date night. We do date every week. And we, we were sitting in the parking lot of Chipotle. Not <laughs> Applebee's? What is yeah. wrong with you? <laughs> and I, I was telling her, you know, how discouraged I was and, I, and what I had been praying through that day. And and her phone buzzed. She said, well, it's got an MP3 on it. It's got a song and it has your name on it. She played it. And it was, um, you know, I met Craig at a church called Redeeming Grace. And right then I'm like, where, where are we going with this? Yeah. Cause I know he's an unbeliever. Right. And you know, it just, he just rolled through. And as he sang that song, I felt God almighty singing over me through the voice of 
my best bud who was an atheist. And the song is all about Jesus. That's what's so amazing mm-hmm. about the song is it's it's not about Craig. It's not about Walker. And that's our story. Our story mm-hmm. is not about us. It's uh, it's all about Jesus. I'm it, curious, though, like how long did it go from that song in that moment till you actually, you know, came to faith? It's a complicated story. We we yeah. I was I was kind of rescued um, in the music business by a guy named Shane McAnally. Okay. And he just, I met him in Smoothie King. Don't have a song for it Boy, yet, but you, I'm working you on really it. go to nice some about, places. Some about chain restaurants, <laughs> yeah. This is where I live, man. It's strip, strip mall land. I love it. You know what you're going to get, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's this guy named Shane, I, I didn't have to work at Costco anymore. He started producing me. And we had a, we had a hit, we had a top 10 record called You Broke Up With Me. And that, you know, paid some bills and get, got my family on our feet. And then Lainey and I actually lost our seventh kid. Right. And when we lost Oakley, um, I mean, I, Broken's not the, doesn't really do it justice. But just as a, as a, as a human, I was just sick of myself, man. I mean, I, we, we had some, we had some dark moments there. Um, my career just kind of stopped you know, for a second, went home and, you know, Lainey and I grieved. But as I got back on the road, it just felt purposeless and uh, I felt gross. And, and I actually, it's funny, I had a conversation with Lainey one night. We, we, we did a long distance relationship growing up a lot. And so we sometimes we do better just talking on the phone. It's actually funny, but on the, on the bus after a show one night, I was just tired and just tired of it all and I I called her and I was hurting and I and I said you know I said tell me a story about somebody as gross as me that really changed you know from your from your lord and say you know So was she a believer? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. okay. I, yeah, I was curious about oh, yeah. her faith yeah. story inside yeah, of this. Yeah, she she's been she was a believer <coughs> our whole lives okay. and uh and and you know that created a lot of tension you sure. know in our house and so she she said Paul and I said Paul doesn't count I was like he's in <laughs> he's in the manual but uh, yeah Lainey had this book by Rosaria Butterfield that had just been recommended to her and I I read it that night I read that book that night and I connected the our our testimonies were so similar except she had surrendered you know, her life to Jesus and I hadn't. And I came home and the first thing I did was drive up to this Barnes and Noble and I put a hoodie on and mm-hmm. I didn't want anybody to see me. And I bought a Bible. And oh, I no hid way. it in this bag for a couple of weeks. I didn't want my kids to see it because I was embarrassed. You know, I knew they'd be like, oh. And then I, I finally told Lainey and we, you know, I explained to the kids and man, I, I just read it and then um and then we took Craig and Laura out to Miso, a Japanese oh, restaurant. Boy, you this, is the it nicest, up. this is the nicest <laughs> restaurant we've been to in the whole interview. Yeah, right. we, they had like actual napkins. They did. And that, <laughs> we and need at, a card. And please. at that and at that at that table, I'll never forget it. I mean, I sit there all the time and I, I remember I told mm. I said, Craig, I believe mm. and I think you mm. what did you say? You said I yeah, I was like you believe what do you believe and he said all of it i said i, I gotta give you a hug we we stood up and i i mean the biggest bear hug i probably squeezed the lungs out of him and then i just said hang on a minute i, I need a minute yeah i need so this, i need some spring rolls yeah could you, could you pass those Dude, i walked back into that bathroom in in miso and i just hit my knees and just worshiped the Lord. And that was one of like the greatest nights of, of my life. Oh, it's really cool though. It's like that whole path and that whole journey though. It, it And I know you pushed that away and it's God and stuff like that, but it, God uses us to do things. And it started with you being generous and giving him a van. Like that was the catalyst for that kind of stuff. My best friend is agnostic, which I hope he doesn't see this uh, because I'm going to have to give him a car. Uh, and I don't have an extra one. And Does he so, need one? Yeah, yeah, you got one, yeah, Craig. Say, what, no, do you, what do you own a car lot? No, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I'm, no, I actually, in some way, like, I, I, I hope that, uh, you know, he's, he, he sees this and other people see this that wrestle through is God real and see somebody like you that came to that place 
in your own time and be like, man, it, somebody loved me, and now I'm going to do this for other people. I love that. But while we got you here, I want to play paper or plastic okay. with you, okay? All like right. when you go to the grocery store and they'd ask you paper or plastic, you have a choice. All right. And so here we go. Four by four or two door? I'll take a four wheel drive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that what you have or you got a minivan? No, I have a Prius. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I would say I would love a four wheel drive. <laughs> That's so great. I love my Prius. <laughs> Uh, Auburn or Alabama? We're, we're both Bama, baby. Bama. Are you? Craig's got a... Roll Tide. Uh, Roll Tide. Uh, Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Uh, Carrie Underwood or Mariah Carey? We both have Carries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, exactly. I, I, no, no offense to, to, to Underwood, but I'm, I'm a big Mariah Carey. What? I did not yeah. see that coming. Oh, man. Vision of love. I had a vision of love. That hit me right when girls didn't have cooties anymore. Oh, really? <laughs> and it made me want to fall in love. Like, really? I, I'm a huge Mariah Carey. Like, now, yeah. I will say that when Christmas rolls around, yeah. all I want for Christmas is you. Uh, over and over. 100%. That I means it's Christmas. Christmas. Dude. There you nice. There's yeah. a collab. There's yeah, a collab. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Y'all want to be on the next album. Oh, my gosh. If oh, I, that'd be amazing. If I got to collab with Mariah Carey, <laughs> Lila, my daughter, would think I am the coolest human. Uh, vegan or in season? Meat. Meat, attaboy. Yeah. <laughs> Grubhub or go get grub? So basically, do you like things brought to you, or are you still the guy that's like, I don't need you to bring me stuff, I'm gonna go get it? I think I'm kind of old school. I've, I've been trying to work on that, like yeah. learning new stuff. It's, e it's easy to get it brought to you. It's like soggy sometimes, yeah. and so I'll go get it. Like, who do I think I am? Like, I think, I think I'm better than you. I'm all yeah. bougie because I'm bringing stuff. Like, I'm having McDonald's brought to me. Right. Like, that seems crazy. It does crazy. feel cool, though. <laughs> all right, and finally, Applebee's or Chili's? I, I'm under contract. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>